Hello YouTube friends. While I'm filming this, it's the couple of days before my Last Homely House Christmas boxes go live. So I've been very, very busy with all that the organisation it takes to do that. But that hasn't stopped Ant. He has been working so hard every single day on this cabin, even in the worst of the horrible rain. So today he's been putting a veranda um, cover on. He's been putting this this um, roof to the veranda and he's going to board that out. But really I want to show you the inside of the cabin because the last time we saw this uh, cabin on uh, the last homely garden, he just finished cladding it all in uh, Tyvek and he put the windows in, all of that. Uh, the recycled windows that I'd bought. Not bought, I didn't buy them <laughs> at all. So let me show you inside here. Now, as soon as we come in here, of course, it's really, really dark. This bit here is where the windows are going to be. That was where I had that scrappy old door that didn't work as a window. So my son's going to order some double glazed units to go in there. Where is he? He's right up there talking to Ant. He's over there. So he's just measured up for the windows there. So we have this window here. And this one here, the only thing providing light at the moment. But I will show you, I'll tw twizz you around and I'll show you some of the things that Ant's been doing. So here is the composting toilet with, complete with its seat. And it's got its own little window here and there's going to be a door across here. So that's gone in perfectly. But I wanted to talk to you about what we're covering the walls with. So can you see these quite rough um, boards here? Well, what these are, these are reclaimed wood from pallets. You know those pallets that things get delivered on and you always see them stacked up all over the place um, and you know pallets. So I bought some bundles of pallet wood here just to see if we wanted to use them and they're really really rough. They've got loads of um, nails in them and the edges are all a little bit uh, shot but and Ant and I when we first opened the pack with them in we were disappointed when we saw them but in fact I think for what this cabin is I think they look great and so we've ordered enough now to do the rest of the cabin and so the ceiling and the walls are going to be clad with this wonderful pallet wood which I've completely changed my mind about <laughs> now um, now, of course, the walls then, if we look here, he's put this stuff called OSB. And this is on the outside of the cabin. And then these uh, beams, uh, what are they? What would you call these? These uprights here. And this gap's particular because we're going to put insulation in there. Now, for a long time, I've wanted to use wool insulation. And so I researched it. And I found, let's get this one down to show you. It's not very heavy. Okay. So this is the wool insulation that I found. Now, this is um, wool with 15% polyester in it, which is the right blend, apparently, to make it um, exactly what you need. It's treated. Um, in fact, it goes through a lot of processes. Uh, in order to make it usable. Oh, hang on. Ant's just coming down with another big board. Let's just watch him do that. He's always carrying something really, really heavy. Here he comes again, carrying a very heavy thing. And this wood here, which is some more of this OSB board, this is going to be the roof for the uh, overhang of the veranda, or the deck I'm calling it now. This bit when you step outside of the cabin, 
onto the pond here is building an overhang here so that I can sit outside in the summer with my knitting and not get sunburned, something like that. Or not get rained on. Anyway, he's got his set up here on the, this wonderful boardwalk <laughs> and he's um, cutting his um, OSB. How are you getting on? Perfect. Perfect. Going really well. Get these boards cut onto the, onto the roof here um, and then we can put the feather edge boards on as shingles to give it a look of shingles anyway and then that'll keep the water off as well we'll put a waterproof liner on mm. first probably some more the pond liner actually because, because we've still got a little bit spare we've still got this pond liner which we've used on the roof of the main cabin yep which we've got a plan for and then just to protect this just to make it waterproof so you're sitting underneath and the rain's not coming through <laughs> I would like that. <laughs> if I don't come out and show you what's going on down in the cabin, because I'm not here for the next few days, I'll come back and I'll have it finished. <laughs> you never know. I thought you'd better see no. it. So just step outside. There's still, there's still quite a bit to do. OK, hang on, hang on a minute. I'm just going to get into step into the light because it's very dark in there. So how's it going then anyway? How, what, what bits are you enjoying? The whole lot. Yeah. The whole lot. I was just saying to John that um, make it up as you go along yeah. never happens very often. No. And the ideas that we're having yeah. to be able to put some of them in to practice is great. I know? think that's what I'm so. loving as well. We had a chat this morning and I said that, you know, I've always wanted to do something like this but never really known where to start. Yeah, yeah. So having someone who does know what to do and my mad ideas and, and we bring the two of them together and mix them round and we get something that absolutely works definitely and uh, well it does look what we've got so yeah, far i think so you know? too and sometimes a crazy idea works yeah you know but sometimes they don't and sometimes we have to say idea too far Kate. yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah, 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 yeah we've it. had one or two well more than one or two of them so yeah. far but look what we've got yeah. you know and it started off on the back of a back of an piece envelope. Of paper, Absolutely. Right? So you know, I haven't done so bad. No, I think we, I think we're doing great, and this is by no means the end. We've gone a long, <laughs> long way still to go, and the ideas keep on coming, don't they? they certainly do. So I love the way our working yeah. day goes. So Ant turns up in the morning, and I pass out the electric cable for him to use. And then I'll pop down a time or two. It's quite cold down here, have you noticed? Because um, uh, it's uh, November now. I'm filming this in November. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end of the day, he brings the electric cable back and he pops in for five minutes, which turns into half an hour, where we look at different websites about, oh, what about this? What about this? <laughs> and we're looking at all these weird and wonderful things. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I love it. it uh, it's, it it's good because it sets us up for the next mm. two or three days. That's you right. know, the ideas, <laughs> yeah. the crazy ideas that we'll have when I finish two work. Two or three hours, the way you work. <laughs> well... I don't know, it's, yeah. uh, it's pretty straightforward. It is good. So one so, thing that Ant did yesterday... Uh, Ant put this uh, bird feeder up there with just one little bird feeder on. And uh, tell us what's been going on there. The birds have loved it. Absolutely loved it. I've been on with a nail gun making the right racket and they're still coming down and they're loving it. Do you remember what some of the birds are that we've had here today? Yeah, we've had goldfinches, greenfinches, blue tits, great tits... Chaffinches, bullfinches, siskins, coltits. Nut hatch. Nut hatch as well. Wow. So we've had a, Amazing. a wide array of birds already at this time. Already, light, you know? and it only went up yesterday, yeah, yeah. and there's all this activity around and about the cabin. And they love it. They do, they do. So it's going to cost me a fortune in bird food, but I don't <laughs> mind. And well, Eileen, of course, is still loving it. You've got to have something to look out of your head, haven't you? So. <laughs> got to look out of the window at something, haven't I? I'm just going to k carry on with my little tour inside, though, because I was just telling them all about the wool insulation. Yeah, is this yeah. the first time you've worked with wool insulation? It is. Yeah, yeah. Most of the time, um, when you're building frame and, and um, timber frame buildings, most of it's king span that you put in, which is that tin-covered... Like polystyrene, Poly or styrofoam, ah, yeah, yeah, but yeah. harder, isn't it? It is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. to get to work with this is sheep's wool, and you can tell because it's it's you haven't got smell of vision, but it smells of sheep. <laughs> it smells of sheep. It does. It really does. It, and uh, it, to be able to use that, it's, it's great. It's nice to work with because it hasn't got There's any no, fiber glass in. It's or? not an irritant at all. No. You know, it doesn't. You haven't got any of them sharp fibers that get into you at all. It makes you sneeze now and again. Does like, it? And, uh, 
it's fine it, and it you know tears I mean? really easily yeah 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 uh, I'm pleased that we chose to, to go with that one because it is going to make this cabin snug and warm well it's a, like I said yesterday when we sat it's already warm yes you know so and what like there's none of it lined hardly apart mm. from the, the toilet. Mm. So once it's all lined, it's going to be really warm. But people are asking about how I'm going to heat this in the cold winter and whether I would have a wood-burning stove. And I'm not going to have a wood-burning stove. Firstly, it takes up quite a big area in what is really quite a small shed. And secondly, it would take quite a while to warm up to get going and warm up and then I'm, I might only be here for half an hour and then go back up to the house again or out somewhere else and so we're going to look I'm researching different sorts of halogen heaters which might be the best way to do it we're also going to have because we're going to have electricity in here at some point we haven't organized that yet but we're also going to have um some form of lighting in here and I, I'd like that to just not it doesn't need to be much the windows provide lighting but in the evening it would be nice to have lighting so these pallet boards then which were initially we didn't like at all <laughs> and now we've come right round to really liking them and liking how they look and this makes it look like a really kind of rustic kind of cabin this is not going to be um very finished it's going to be quite rough around the edges which is always what I wanted so this is the beginning part of this video because I wanted to get you updated before he rumps on and does anything else while I'm not here <laughs> permission to rump on Mr White We've had all sorts of weather since um, I started recording these clips for this video. Uh, and Ant's got quite a good day here for uh, doing this job. But it's nice to pause and look at the, uh, the, the location we have here. The winter sun doesn't get much higher than that in the sky at this time of year. But it just reminds you just how beautiful this pond is and the cabin is going to be an amazing uh, tranquil place to sit all year round So this should be enough pallet wood then to deck out the whole of the inside of the cabin. Oh, it's not so warm, is it? No, no, no. you can tell the weather's changing the for weather's sure. The weather's definitely changing. Yeah, yeah. So I'm back down in the cabin with Ant now. Now I've been busy in the house and uh, and so he's been cracking on. <laughs> I have, uh, he's just been working away every day. But yesterday, he started to do this one particular thing. Now, talk about that a bit, because I'm amazed by what you're doing. Well, I've seen, you know, kid does a quilting, and I often pop in and out of the house to have a chat, first thing in the morning or last thing at night before I go home. And um, she was cutting a little bit of quilting and fabric up, and I says, I can do that in the shed. And she went, no, you can't. <laughs> so, of course... I did. This is a challenge. And so <laughs> I've made a, a quilter out of him, a wooden quilter, all <laughs> the I... But he's a quilter now. Yeah, yeah. And so I talked to him about all the way that these shapes tessellate together, and of course you can do that with wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dead easy. We'll have a saw, a miter crosscut saw, which you can turn and slide to different angles, and literally put the bit of wood in, chop it at a couple of angles, and there you have. Wooden fabric for a kit to put fabric. together and uh, so some this crazy idea that's coming here, up, I can tell you. This is a crazy idea. This wall here then just had the, the um, uprights. What, what would you call those? The, yeah, just the framing. The framing. Just the just framing. Just had the framing which we were going to carry on and put the pallet board onto. But then Ants uh, boarded it out with this stuff 
which means that now it it works a bit like my design board and that's exactly what I'm going to do today. Yep. So I went to <laughs> I went to the shop yesterday. I've got I, I've got my bucket here. I've got my cup of tea as well. Let's take that out. And um first of all, I thought that we would just use the wood and just let the wood shapes do the uh, the different shades of wood would show up the pattern wouldn't it uh -huh. but it didn't really work like that did it so it wasn't it was you could see it but you would need you would really need to look carefully and i'm all about color in the house but we've got this phrase we're using now which is cabin colors because i don't really want to bomb this place with a lot of color you can come back to me in a few months time <laughs> and pull me up on that one all of you 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 uh, but I I'm going to turn it one day, it's going to be very pink, yellow and orange. Well, this is the worry that John had that worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was really worried that I was just going to paint the whole thing pink and green, which are colours I absolutely love, and the house is full of those. So I bought these little tiny tester pots here, which are wood stain. Well, we're going to make some patterns. We're going to have a go anyway. Yep. Yeah. Well, am I going to yeah. get under your feet today? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Well, it's a bit rainy outside. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually not a bad day, but it's due to rain quite a, a lot later. But this cabin's snug and warm. Absolutely now that is. The, most of the walls are insulated now and boarded out. And um, so, yeah, I'm just going to get under his feet all day. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bothered. He's a good lad, isn't he? <laughs> I think what, that's what I've loved most of all about working with Ant, and I'd say this if he wasn't here. He's so good, but he's so willing <laughs> to, to just duck and weave between the my jobs eye. we need. My eye, it's dead easy, one not Well, we'll turn the camera off and we'll work this out between us. What <laughs> you <laughs> 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 So, new career for you? No. <laughs> Definitely not. Okay. Uh, now that we've got that safely onto there, I'm going to start designing yeah, yeah. as if it was a design board at home. Excellent. <laughs> so what Ant's doing right now, he's putting sashing <laughs> all the way around the quilt. He's making me a frame all the way around this board here. Uh, a sweet round and a clear round and we've just started looking at these shapes and wondering how we're going to put them up and what was really interesting was that he's he's telling me how he's going to cut them and it was exactly the same as I would cut them with a rotary cutter and a blade and a mat and he's going to do it on his saw and I think the aha moment was that when we decided on which two blocks we're going to use the coming out the shapes, here, have a sit. The shapes for one shape, I'm going to choose a flying goose shape and the pinwheel block. The triangles for the pinwheel block are the same size as the triangles for the top of the goose. Mind blown. Perfect. So, how's, how does this translate into your world of wood? It's, it's actually, when I started marking the wood out, it's very coral, it's very similar yeah. to what you do with your fabric. Yeah. You know, you'll you line I'll lie a template over the top, mark it, down the wood, and cut them all and maybe cut twenty at a time. <laughs> I'm and doing you do the same exactly thing. the same with a piece of cloth, you know. Exactly. So we're gonna end up with a wooden quilt mm. which is apart from a saw and no saw and it's made in it's exactly almost exactly the same. the same way. And then now the creative part of this, which it's all of it is creative well, the entire cabin is a creative genius. <laughs> Thing. But this wall here, which was his idea, you know, I had n n not my idea, it was his idea. Do you want to put a quilt on the back wall, a wooden one? Said, what? And so, <laughs> and it's working now because he's willing to give it a try and it is working. And um, I can't remember, I was going to say something really important then, I can't remember what it is because I'm so blown away by what we're doing. So Turn them out on mass now for you. Well, <laughs> what I don't want you to do is make too many. That would be a mistake. That would be alright. Because we'd have to put them somewhere else. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm going to calculate now how many you need. 
Aye. And then uh, if there's gaps anywhere, I'm going to do what quilters do. Put a creative little bit of something else, just chuck it in, and we're going to do that with wood. Yeah, so I, I like think that idea. I do. Because then it doesn't... It, so, I mean, there are some very perfect quilts out there. I don't make perfect quilts. This isn't going to be perfect, but that's the style I love. Yeah, yeah. It's going to fit in the cabin perfect. Cabin style. We Definitely. keep saying cabin style and yeah. cabin colours going to fit in the cabin perfectly. Absolutely. Okay, great. I right. couldn't be more pleased. I'm going to start um, counting up now. So right, and I'll start cutting. <laughs> I'm scratching my head over this one because what I'm trying to decide now is how quilty to make it and I've got my flying geese and I've got my pinwheels but then I've just been thinking how nice it would be to have some four patches so if we had um, squares all the same squares with that four patch going up the middle that might look quite nice and different from this and this so I haven't told him yet but I might get him to cut me some four patches he's listening but <laughs> I might get some four patches I think painting might be what I do now Well, we're very far on now with painting and cutting and thinking and so we're at the point where we think we might actually start sticking some of these up on the wall to see what they look like. Now all the quilters out there will know that I'm actually designing this as I go. I've kind of got the blocks I want laid out and painted but I haven't actually got the final idea about how it's going to be. So because we're, we haven't got a design board like I have in the house with pins that I can stick in, what Ant's going to do, he's going to put a piece of board along the wall there so that then I can place some of these and they'll stay in by just gravity and we'll see if that's the right placement and then we'll stick those in. So he's going to do a, 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 a guide because who builds from the top down? Well, There's nothing in history that was built from the top down, was it? <laughs> so they didn't is... start the Eiffel Tower at the top and work their way down, did they? No, you, you know. Just let's get those pearls of wisdom from the guy. He's right there, look. <laughs> and so I think what one of the things you need to know about Ant, I'll just let's move the camera a little bit. Actually, there's, there's a lot of things you need to know about Ant. <laughs> one of them is that he's a dry stone waller. <laughs> You've never built a dry stone wall from above, have you? Start at the bottom and work your way up. <laughs> yeah. Build a cavern. Start at the bottom and work your way up. You do with most things. Uh, everything. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to think of something you don't. But because the fabric's so lightweight and I'm looking, stepping back and looking at it like that, then I can actually do it from any direction I like. And I, at the moment, I'm still treating this like a fabric. Yeah. <laughs> because it's behaving like fabric. Until this bit. Until this part. So Anne's going to put a guide piece on there for me and we're going to put these blocks on and see if that works. But there's another thing you need to know about Anne because I've been painting these pretty colours onto these um, blocks here. And Anne's colour blind. Very colour blind. So I say, what do you think that looks like? He says, grey. <laughs> Poor thing. So actually the colours aren't bright and zingy, but they are subtle. No subtle going on here, is there, sadly? Not at all. Not at all. 
The colour range in my eyes is very, very restricted compared to yours. I. You seem fairly cheerful yeah. about it, though. I've what can 50, you do? I've had 53 years. 50, of it, so <laughs> 53 years. It's not going to change overnight. So I, I can't say to him, do you like the colours co coordination there? It's just all down to me. <laughs> I'm, okay. getting, I'm not taking the blame, you see. <laughs> I'm not taking the blame. Okay, so we'll just put this board on then. And then another thing that you need to know. <laughs> um, this channel then, I think this will be, I don't know, video number nine or ten. I can't quite remember where we're up to. Maybe, I don't know. I'm really enjoying numbering these so that you can find them. But, uh, and people, a lot of people are coming from the last only house. Go on, you can make a noise, I don't mind. <laughs> uh, to watch what's going on in the garden, uh, which is lovely. <laughs> But um, Ant's wife, Kelly, was looking at the comments and one of the comments said, Kate, you should just stick to quilting. And so I thought, I've heard you and that's what I'm doing. I'm quilting today. <laughs> we'll put some quilting on. So if, if you don't like the garden channel, there's lots going on at the house. Okay, so now then, they're dryish. Yeah, yeah. Well, what about just transferring those up to there? Shall we see what that looks like? Have a go and see, yeah. Um, editing and these clips that I did a few weeks ago uh, for this video for you today and I still don't know why I made Ant do these quilt blocks from the top down. Maybe that's how I design fabric quilts but I could have stacked them up from the bottom couldn't I? I've, I apologize Ant, I've no idea why I did that. But anyway, we did get a result and I had a lot of fun painting all these little triangles in all these beautiful colours. Not at all my usual style of uh, really bright colours. I think I've mentioned that. But uh, I did have uh, a good time uh, mixing these paints together and making um, some sort of a job of painting these little blocks. So John's just turned up. Hello. Um, I've got to go because we're going out, he and yeah, I. Yes. And I'm going to leave... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave Anne in charge of cutting me a lot more of these. So next time you see this... Project. Ant will be fed up. <laughs> Ant will be fed up. Step into frame, Ant. Yeah. Ant will be says he's going to be fed up. You're not you enjoying cutting these? No. <laughs> I just do as I'm told. Exactly. <laughs> now then it's, it's part and parcel of what we're making on it. Well, it is. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it really is. And <laughs> it's the same as you, couldn't you? Cutting your squares to make your quilts? Yes, you know? exactly the same. We can't make a exactly quilt on the wall without cutting blocks all <laughs> No, you, can't. <laughs> yeah. you can't. No, you've been brilliant today. It's been really great because just realising this has been a, like a dream for me. Yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll be all right. I know. I'll put all the lids on these paints then. I'll get myself... I've got to go and clean my hands now. I always get very messy when I'm painting. It's uh, Saturday and I've come down to the cabin this morning to carry on with the painting. Ants cut me a lot of triangles and you saw that we were putting flying geese. I've also got a cold so I sound like this. Uh, we were putting flying geese on the walls and then over this side here, let me tip you up a little bit square triangles in pinwheels. So this morning I'm painting the last few of these wooden triangles with this um, these tester pots that I bought. Now, so we've got those there and what we need to do now is is get enough to go to the bottom here and so on the back of this platform here I've painted up all the ones that are coming next but I need a lot more plain triangles to go inside to be the other half of the half square. So I'm just, I've got four more um, 
uh, <coughs> I've got four more sets of blocks that I can paint and so uh, I'm going to do that now and it's been quite interesting painting them because I'm I'm mixing colours uh, to get a, a, a bigger palette than the colours I've got so let's do a couple shall we decided I would do two different styles of block rather I could have done flying geese over the whole wall or pinwheels over the whole wall but I'm doing two different blocks and where they meet in the middle I may have to do something with the little bit where uh, if there's a bit of a gap there but I want to show you something else that Ant made because I've certainly turned him into a quilter I drew out a block for him and showed him how easy it was to construct because that's what I love about quilting. You look at something that looks quite complicated and in fact, you know, it's it's just it's one unit and what you do with that one unit gives you endless possibilities. So I, I drew out on the scrap of wood a wonky star and um, when I came down this morning, look what I saw on the on the platform here. There's all the elements of a wonky star. A couple of days later, my granddaughter came with her daddy and she really enjoyed playing with the shapes and making her own patterns. I'm going to make her into a quilter, if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> well, as you can see there, uh, cabin lodge is uh, progressing quite quickly uh, and now we need a door so we've got these wood boards they're just fencing boards and we're going to put them on the floor as well so to keep in character with the rest of the lodge I've made a door out of them so this is the door and uh, again just recycled a lot of the materials that we've had left this is a 6x2 which was the rafters in the roof and this is a 3x2 which is the framing so we managed to make a door out of everything that we've had left over and lying about. Um, so I think it should uh, match in really well. And also when I was watching the telly the other night, this is how I'm getting into this. On one of the programs on the telly, they were out in the wilds and they made a door handle and it was literally a hole through with a sliding um, piece of wood in and it just acts as a as a sliding lock. So that may be something that we'll pursue as well. So see what Kate thinks when she hears about it. <laughs> well, the door handle's completed now. Listen to this. I love the squeak. And here's the finished scrappy wooden quilt panels with my flying geese and my pinwheels and the four patch uh, up the middle separating the two which I'm going to just leave as plain wood I love how this looks I'm really grateful to Ant for su firstly suggesting it but secondly, having the willingness to make all those shapes and help me to hang them on the wall. So just lately, 
It's been very cold and the pond is frozen at the moment. It's a bit of a skating rink for the goose. But it has melted quite a lot now and it's pretty wet. But she still can't swim on there. And just look what I saw this morning. Constant visitors, these deer. This is what it liked, looked like yesterday, before the rain came and washed all this little smattering of snow away. So I'm going to leave you now with some pictures of the mostly finished cabin waiting for the window and the wood cladding on the outside and some beautiful pictures of the winter wonderland before the rain came and melted it all away thank you for watching thank you so much it's been a bit of a disjointed video this one because I was so very unwell in the middle of it all so I did miss quite a lot of the filming uh, Ant was just cracking on and bringing logs in for me to keep me warm. I'm so grateful to him for the huge amount of work that he's done to make this cabin of mine a reality. But I hope I'll be able to show it to you soon with all the finishing touches. But for now, subscribe if you haven't because I post not to a schedule so you may miss a video if you aren't uh, haven't got your notifications on and uh, I've really enjoyed editing this video for you and I'll see you next time with so much else that's going on in the garden I'm finding it really hard to keep up so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time